Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our immersive integration tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the only uh, machine to be added in, by immersive integration, the uh, industrial coke oven. <clears throat> it's a very large multi-block, so bear with me here. It's also very expensive. It's, it takes an enormous amount of iron. It's basically just a massive block uh, of iron. So, <coughs> excuse me. Let's uh, take a look at the three blocks you're going to need to craft in order to make it. The coke oven wall, heated coke oven wall, and coke oven ports. Okay? Uh, in order to craft the coke oven wall, you will require three buckets, four iron ingots, and two steel mechanical components. The steel ones, not the iron ones. And that gives you eight coke oven walls, which are apparently safe for decoration. Uh, for the heated coke oven wall, it's the exact same recipe, except that you're going to need to use lava buckets uh, instead of empty buckets. Okay, and that also gives you eight. Finally, we have coke oven ports, which are the same recipe, except we have uh, six iron ingots, and the center bucket is replaced by a steel mechanical component, and that gives you four. Okay? Now, you're going to need a lot of these. In order to build the industrial coke oven, you're going to need uh, 70 coke oven walls, 60 heated coke oven walls, and 10 coke oven ports. So you are going to have to craft the coke oven wall recipe nine times in order to get, and that'll leave you with uh, 72. Um, you're going to need to craft the heated coke oven wall uh, eight times. Uh, which leaves you with 64, and you're going to need to craft the coke oven port recipe, um, unfortunately, three times. I mean, yeah, three times, which will leave you uh, with 12. So, you, unfortunately, I don't like it when they do that, but everyone does it where you're going to be left with, uh, have leftover blocks, uh, unfortunately. Now, that's a lot of iron, so you better get to mining it. Um, so now, uh, if we come over here, you can see what it looks like when it's all built and when you've uh, whacked it with the hammer. Uh, it's just a large five uh, deep, seven wide, and four block tall uh, machine. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here and we'll actually build it. It's not difficult to build, um, it just takes a little bit. So it's five blocks wide and on each of the corners you're going to need a coke oven port. So I'll place one there, and I'll count five, two, three, four, five, and I'll place that. And we'll count over seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll place another one. And we're going to want one in all four of the corners. Then on the uh, long sides, you're going to stagger two more for a total of eight of these on the bottom layer. All right? We're going to use Coke Oven Wall to connect these together and then fill the space with the heated coke oven walls. Oops. So just like that is our first layer. So the heated coke oven walls go run all the way through and behind the coke oven ports we have the standard coke oven wall. Okay, everyone with me? Then on the second layer, on each of the uh, long ends, you're going to place one coke oven port. And then we're just going to take the walls and we're going to do the same thing we did before. Every other row is wall and the heated ones in between those. So you can see we have more layers of the regular than the heated because that's why we need more of them. And then we do it again on the third layer which is just wall and heated wall. Well run that through. Oops, missed a block. Okay, now we're three blocks tall, so we need another layer. Oops, I missed a block. One more layer of the walls to make this four blocks high. So, as you can see, it's a big cube, well, it's a rectangle, it's a rectangular cube of iron blocks. Now take your engineer's hammer and you want to whack that block right there. Okay, I've tried whacking some of the ports, it doesn't work, but it does work if you whack this block 
uh, right here in the middle. Um, the second one up of the heated wall. Uh, and that seems to work. And there we go. That is our uh, industrial coke oven. So if we come over here and take a look at it, um, the GUI is fairly simple. Um, it, it has a tank for creosote oil and it can store 64,000 millibuckets before it needs to be emptied. Um, you can do that by putting buckets into uh, the various slots over here. If, for example, I go ahead and grab myself an empty bucket, I can place it in this slot and it will come out the bottom with uh, creosote oil in it. So, very standard. Uh, these four slots are all for coal. So, if we take coal, we would then stick it uh, in each of these four bottom slots. And all four slots will run at, at, and cook at the same time. That's the benefit of the industrial coke oven. It's faster than the standard coke oven and it cooks four at the same time. Okay? So we can just pull those out. And then the coal, coal coke goes into the top slots uh, here and uh, you can pull out the coal coke through any one of the uh, eight slots on the uh, the front and back on the long side. Okay, just stick a chest next to one of these or a conveyor belt coming out and it will deposit all of the cold coke out of all four of these slots out of one of these slots. So you don't have to uh, stick a chest or conveyor on each one of these uh, four slots. Okay? Now obviously we don't want to have to fill this thing manually. If you're going through the expense of, uh, of building this enormous machine, you're going to want to fully automate this thing. Okay? Now, in order to fully automate this thing, you're going to need a way to evenly fill all four of these slots down here. And it, there's different ways to do it, but immersive integration does uh, introduce a block which will make this process uh, of filling these four slots evenly very, very simple. And that is the item robin. Okay? Uh, if you look at it, it does bear a resemblance to the item sorter, but it doesn't have nearly as much functionality, but what the functionality that it does have is actually very, very useful, not just for immersive in, uh, engineering, but uh, for a lot of other mods I can think of. So the item robin is a simplified version of the item sorter. It doesn't have a GUI. Uh, in fact, if I right click on it, nothing happens uh, with an empty hand. In order to make the item robin, you're going to need a wooden storage crate, two redstone dusts, and two steel mechanical components. So it's very cheap. Uh, and it's also very simple for what it does. Now, if I pull out a engineer's hammer and point at this thing, you can see that it actually has settings. So it'll tell us which side is which, so the west side, the south side, the north side, and then it has an item count. Now, right now it says item count one. At the top it says item count zero, for example. Take my empty hand, right click the item, Robin. Uh, nothing happens. However, if I take, uh, actually it should reset. It doesn't reset. All right. Well, if I break this item, Robin, and I place a new one, now the item count is zero on all sides, okay? Now, the way that you set this is that you hold an items in your hand, okay? You hold some items in your hand, and then you right-click on one of the sides, okay? Now, it says item count set to five, because I had five coal in my hand when I right-clicked it. If I pull up my hammer, you can see item count five. I could also set the item count to uh, 59, item count 59. Now, what does this mean? Well, the item robin is able to take items in on one of its sides um, by using a hopper or by using conveyor belts or tubes, whatever the heck you want to do to put items into this thing. Um, and then it will output, it will go around its various sides uh, in order, in, in a certain order, I don't know which, and when it reaches a side that has an item count, it will deposit that number of items of whatever you put into it on, out of that side, as long as there's a something to retrieve it, to receive it, uh, before moving to the next side and outputting the number of items that that has been set up for. Okay? So, the easiest way to think of the item robin, if we, uh, and the easiest way to set it up, really, if we just go and set each of these four sides, and there are six sides, one of the sides is an input, like the top, so uh, you have five possible output sides if you also set up the bottom. Um, so currently I've set up these four sides as item count one. Now if I pull out my hammer and I right click, it will lock the item robin. It will lock the sides so that the, the settings can't be uh, adjusted. So 
what you do is you want to set up your sides by, by right clicking them with various amounts of an item and then you want to lock it with the hammer so you can't accidentally mess it up okay now by setting all four of these sides to one if I was to put an item in the top or the bottom probably the top is the easiest uh, if I were to put like a stack of items the item robin would spit one of whatever it was out of the this side then it would spit one out of this side then one of this side then one of this side and then we keep doing that until it ran out of items because I have each side set to one but I could set different sides to different amounts so I could have two come out uh, this side I could I could have three come out this side and when it reached that side it would spit out that number of items before moving on to the next side do, do we get it yeah it's not that uh, complicated but it is very useful um, for evenly distributing items or unevenly distributing items if you want more of a cert of the of an item to go one way than to go the other way uh, if we come around to the back of this uh, industrial coke oven you can see that I've actually set up a system using conveyors and the item robin it's definitely not the most efficient setup when it comes to placing conveyors down but it does work so what I've got here is I've got each of these four uh, sides I've got them uh, attached with conveyors to each of these four uh, coke oven ports alright I got this one running over and all the way over to here it's important to note with the item robin that it will not work if you have a, a slanted inclined conveyor belt right up against it you need to have a if you're gonna use conveyor belts it has to be a straight piece of conveyor coming out the side then you can go down uh, if this slant uh, piece was over here this would not work because technically there would be no conveyor belt uh, block actually on the uh, item robin because when they're slanted like this they're actually on the block below okay so I have each of these sides set to one item count one and I got it locked and I got a hopper here to put items in and I got a chest so if I go to this chest and I stick a stack of coal in you can see what it's doing it is going around itself and it's spitting out one coal on each side so what that's going to do is it's going to take this stack of coal and it's going to evenly distribute it between these four sides. It's going to put 16 coal in each slot. And I'm sure there's a way uh, there's a way that you can make this much more com compact. If you use the pipes from Buildcraft or something, you could make this much more compact than I have it here. But there we go. It has put 16 coal in each slot. So the item robin, the perfect uh, block to use to set this up. I, and you, I hope you can see that there's a lot of use for this in other mods. Now, there's two additional out, uh, there's two additional pipes uh, of imports on this thing that we haven't talked about yet, uh, and that's where the creosote oil comes in play. Uh, you, if we this these two ports, the one on each of the short sides, is how we uh, take the creosote oil and put it uh, and export it out of the machine and put it into you know like a tank. Unfortunately, if I take a fluid pipe and attach it directly to a barrel, uh, a liquid inventory, it doesn't work. The creosote oil is not coming out. The, unfortunately, the industrial um, coke oven here does not automatically export the liquid. So in order to get this to work, we need to use a fluid pump. But you can't place a pipe and then the fluid pump. The fluid pump needs to be right up against the industrial coke oven so what you want to do is you want to place it on the side so that you know the side with the input and output ports is right up against your uh, your, your coke oven port then go to the side opposite the coke oven hold shift and right click with the hammer that'll set the side that's touching the oven uh, to a blue input side okay now we want to uh, put power in here and I'm going to do that by placing an LV capacitor and then I'm just going to double right click the bottom to make it orange so that it will fill the fluid pump with power you can see there's currently 8000 RF in there we need to put a lever on the side of the fluid pump because it needs a redstone signal to run and then I'm just for for clarity's sake I'm going to right click this side into an output place a fluid pipe against it and put a metal barrel uh, on the receiving end okay 
So this setup right here will take the creosote oil out of the industrial coke oven and put it into this barrel. If I flip the switch, you can see that, that the creosote oil level drops and the metal barrel has been filled. So that's how that works. So we could just um, export all of the creosote oil by breaking the barrel uh, if we weren't in creative placing it somewhere else and placing another one, or most likely you would place a fluid, you build a fluid uh, tank multi-block from immersive engineering and have it run into there. And since there's two uh, output ports, if you wanted to put a pump on each of them uh, and output to each side, I don't know if it would evenly distribute the uh, creosote oil with, their with them both being on, um, but we could, you could certainly try. Uh, I don't see why you would need to, because one fluid pump, you can see, it pumps out very, very quickly. So one fluid pump is definitely able to keep up with production. Because while it is pretty quick, it's not going to produce creosote oil so quickly that the pump can't pump it out. So there we go. That's the uh, industrial coke oven. It is a very large, very expensive uh, multi-block. Um, but it does solve one of the issues currently in immersive engineering, which th there's no upgraded Coke oven. Um, I don't know if the uh, developer has a is going to be adding an updated, co like an improved Coke oven or not. But at least uh, in the meantime, there is this thing, um, which is better than building four Coke ovens as far as speed goes, because um, the Coke oven is slower than this. It just ticks down faster. Um, and it simplifies your setup because I don't think that you're able to uh, automate the standard coke oven. Actually, you can actually just automate it, but you would need a fluid pump for each one, um, which would you know not be the most efficient thing in the world. So there we go. That is the industrial coke oven. I hope you uh, guys uh, understood this um, explanation here. Uh, it's a little unfortunate that the, the visuals of it don't aren't quite up to par with the rest of the immersive engineering, but it, I don't think it wasn't made by the mod author. So anyway, that's that. That's the industrial coke oven and the item robin. Um, I hope you can think up some uses for the item robin, and uh, it's definitely the coke oven is definitely cool. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for future episodes. We're getting through it. immersive integration. It's not going to take too many more episodes. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.